I'm from the South, and we sound, some of us, a type of Southern speech is English. Uh, not, the, not the rapidity with which the English people speak, but it's a first cousin to my ear, and most of my training at school and college was in the classics, and you can't speak with a Southern accent if you're going to play Shaw or, or um, um, Shakespeare or uh, Chekhov. So many people have thought all my life in New York think I'm English, and it's worked for me and it worked against me. But uh, I can't change that now. Though I do have an ear for it, and uh, wherever I am, I sort of pick it up, you know. Well, luckily for me, I was not a quick study, but I was a middle way study. And I did my homework, especially when I had the good scenes to do the following day. And I, my routine would be to leave the studio and then go to my health club and get uh, completely relaxed in the steam room and then swim and then come up and go to the bar and have a martini and probably undo all the good that my health club was there for doing. And then I would go home and go to sleep quite early and wake up with a guilt-ridden conscience and wait, study my lines and get them down under my belt and go back to sleep and wake up and get on my bike. I was one of the first cyclists, really, in the city. Not like the paid messenger boys, but, and I would cycle through the park and get to the studio and we started running our scenes as well before you know it, dress rehearsal and taping. And we'd be through at 4.30 in the afternoon and all, it starts all over again. It's hard work and I could have kicked myself for those martinis and waking up in the middle of the night, but I established that sort of pattern for a while at any rate. Uh, it's hard work, and if uh, you have to conserve your energy, and I didn't know a thing about that in those days. I was young enough to take that sort of thing for granted, like you all are doing this moment. But uh, you, you learn what you have to do to get the best out of yourself, and uh, when you see that red eye go on, it's, it's you and it, <laughs> and it's up to you to satisfy what you set out to do. Jonathan would agree with me that he was terrified his first year, and he's not quite as quick a study as I was. Uh, it, he, and that worried him a lot, and he, but he got used to his own capabilities and limitations and what, ex, what he could do extra hours, as I had found out I could do, and he, he, he got on to the routine of it, and it worked for him. Uh, <laughs> He's so funny, I have to tell you a fun story about <laughs> He was at Yale doing a season Cleopatra, and <laughs> he was famous for missing lines, but he didn't mean to be funny. They were having a dress rehearsal, and as Caesar, he comes out on the stage and sees Cleopatra coiled in the Sphinx, and he says, Hail Caesar! Line. <laughs> <laughs> and so it went that night. <laughs> hail, hail, hail Sphinx, I think you should have said. That's it. He was Caesar. You see how I am. It's the end of the day, folks. So. <laughs> you want to be perfect. You want to have the glibness, the, the effect of being spontaneous and living. And when you make grammatical errors that are outside of your character, and you have to th quickly think of how I can cover it or ignore it, Sometimes it's best to ignore it and go on, you see. But daytime television, without stopping, without taping, going over it, 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 it was like live theater is what it was like, really. I, I've been a, vic a, a victim of the slamming the door in the rage and the whole s set doing like chiffon paper. <laughs> that was, But those have become sort of like Touches of our uh, of our genius. It's like being in a Hitchcock film. Things can like that are so unimportant that we raise our long necks above it and carry on. You see, but they become golden moments in their own way. The the energizing moment of going on to starting it with the red eye. You see, 
Oh, you, you, you're transported. Yes, the energy, any energy you have is fully brought up and uh, you plunge in and try to do the best you can. It, it's a daily challenge, really, daytime challenge. And even when you tape, as we do now, later on, and all my children, you, you make a boo-boo, and if it's, uh, if it's better to stop and do it again, like making a movie. But it takes away the sort of inner excitement of being live, you know? Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to, we have the net under us, as it were, and if we have to go back, then right. look at the book quickly, and then get it straight, and then go on over it again.